Okay, I'm back now. I've took a little bit of a risk here. Um, I was thinking, oh, I'll quickly upload that video um, and then I'll start filming again. I could delete it and then start again. But I just thought I've got to do all the editing, putting all the photographs in. It's going to be a bit of a nightmare. So this is part two of my first November video. So, and we just finished on... Uh, westerly rulers and what i did on that workshop so what i did next is uh i ordered some yarn and that was because when my son was in hospital when he went down to theater um they said he was going to be an hour or more so i um and this was quite late this was probably about half six at this point in the evening and I hadn't had a drink or eaten anything since lunchtime. So I walked to the shop that's on the hospital side, got myself a couple of drinks and some food and a knitting magazine. Um, but I haven't actually got to read all the knitting magazine yet because it was just mayhem in the hospital. But I had stopped buying physical magazines. I didn't I tend to buy them digitally now. But uh, I was feeling a bit sorry for myself because, you know, the ordeal with my son. I thought, I, and I thought I'm buying myself a magazine. And there was a lovely supplement in it. I haven't got it to hands, I can't show you, but there's some really lovely um, animals in it. And, uh, and I'm, my kids do love knitted things. I know it might sound really crazy because they're all teenagers, but they do like me making them things like knitted cuties so I said to him look I said did you like these and he said yeah I said look, pick one of them and I'm going to knit one for you um so I feel a bit this is when he came back from theatre when he was feeling up to it and uh, he chose one so I, ha I wanted to use that exact yarn and you would not believe the trouble I've had sourcing it but I have found it and have ordered it and I've had to order it from two different places but majority from one place and I so hope it, I've never used this company. The reviews look okay, so let's hope. So that's going to turn up. So I'm going to be knitting this owl for my son as a you know a, a, an ordeal, like well, uh, um, you know a bit of an ordeal that he's been through. Um, I did order him some new pajamas um, that came yesterday from Next, and some new slippers. Um, just so he's got some little cosy things, you know, while he's recovering because he's going to be off school for a while now. So um, so if you don't know what I'm going on about, you need to watch part one because my son had emergency surgery. So um, so I've ordered that. Then, then right. Uh, right, dressmaking. Right, I have made, right. Now, you will know that I was in basically making jumpers i wanted to make them for a while but i made a coat that i still not still can't show you the coat because i was a pattern tester and as far as i know the pattern's not been released i have got about 200 emails that i haven't not looked at yet so whether amongst the, all those emails there is a thing saying the pattern's been released you're good to go to share it i don't know but i haven't seen it as of yet sorry i've got a niche so i'm gonna have another sip actually so what was i saying but i'm in the mood for cozy comfortable day-to-day -day makes i don't feel like making anything too fancy because you know where are you going to wear it at the moment i just want things that are that i'm going to wear now i can you know i could wear going to the shops you know and whatever so um you will know I wanted to make jumpers. Now, I didn't mention this jumper in one of my previous videos because I totally forgot about it because it was a PDF that I'd purchased. Well, I say purchased. I got to download it for free because remember that I did the um, seam work, design your own wardrobe? That entitled to me for a year's worth of membership in with that price so i can download the patterns for free so you can purchase this pattern but i downloaded it for free and uh, and i mentioned in a previous video that i sent some files off um a zero to be printed and i couldn't remember which ones and this was one of them now i'm absolutely delighted with this jumper do you know when um Sometimes you think when you make things, thinking, oh, these are going to be like, you know, big and baggy, like some tent looking thing. And I could, because it's got negative ease, I could see it was going to be like a nice little fitted jumper. And you know what? I love it. Uh, I really like it. So I'll, I'll put some pictures on if I haven't put any on already. 
and then I've got and I've took them in all different angles um you know kind of at the front I've took one at the back um the only thing I haven't done on it yet and I don't know whether I'm going to do that is a um do you know like with this one I've top stitched round just above the waistband you can't really sit in you know like I've done it here I didn't do it around the sleeves because they're a bit small um but I haven't, I've done it on the neckline of that Astoria, but I haven't done it round here. And the difference between the jumpers when, when I made them is basically this jumper, I sewed it all on my overlocker, but I sewed on the cuffs and the neckband and the waistband on the sewing machine. Uh, and then I did a top stitch on my sewing machine. But the Astoria, I literally sewed everything on my overlocker. I sewed on the neckband, the there's no cuffs on it and the waistband and the yeah the waistband you don't you don't have cuffs on the story you do a hem on that so i stitched the top stitching of the hem on the sewing machine and i did the same kind of stitching around here but i don't know whether it's because with this one because i sewed it on my sewing machine there wasn't a lot of bulk underneath so I did a stretch straight straight stitch and this stitched really nicely but on the Astoria uh, it was actually my sh machine was really struggling to feed it through do you know when you felt like with the like um the straight stretch stitch you can look like the fabric isn't moving a bit but do you know when you're thinking this doesn't look like it's moving at all so I had to basically try and tease the fabric through a little bit but the only thing it did on my Astoria is if you look up closely some of the stitches look slightly longer than the others where I was trying to force it through so when I got to it's optional whether you do the top stitching so when I got to the bit on my Astoria obviously I keep pointing at this jumper but obviously these you know the similar kind of thing um when I got to do I could have done top stitching on there I thought mm, I don't know if I'm going to bother doing it because my machine was really struggling and I don't know if it's because I've overlocked it. There's a lot more bulk of the overlock lock st seams. So I haven't decided to do that. But I absolutely love this jumper. It's actually really warm. When I took that photograph of it yesterday, I had to take it straight off. Um, I was feeling a bit worse for wear because we did have a drink. We did, when we had the fireworks, we had a bit of a drink um, after. So I was feeling a, a little bit tired when I had that photograph taken yesterday. I don't know if it shows, but um, <laughs> but uh, so um, yes, yeah, so I'm not absolutely. Look, I'm going to make that again. I just feel like it's so feminine and figure hugging and it's just so lovely and I've looked at the hashtag of other Astorias and there's some absolutely gorgeous ones really and I've seen there is two length sleeves and there are three quarter length ones I've seen and I don't know if the pattern has three quarter length whether they're a short sleeve and whether just people have altered them for the like a just below the elbow but I think I'd love a just below the elbow one um, do you know when you're a mom and you're at home and you maybe get back and you want to get your hands in the sink you know sometimes these you know sh long sleeve can be a little bit bothersome can't they so that's my story I absolutely love it and I'm definitely going to make that again um, I did share on uh, a social media a knitted poppy now I probably I think I knitted that in 2014 I have crocheted poppies as well but um the reason I shared that was for the less we forget because it was Remembrance Sunday but it is an old make um, but I just put that out there. I think last year um, I shared a crochet one that I made for a friend that had lost. She sold a car and she left her handmade one in the car and was gutted. So I oh, surprised. I didn't say anything to her because I didn't want to say anything if I just in case I didn't get time to do it. But I made her one as a surprise last year. But I haven't seen those friends now. Uh, all this year because of everything that's gone on it's pretty sad isn't it so that was that um dressmaking plans now I can't tell you exactly what I'm going to make yet because I just finished that Astoria photographed it yesterday I can't tell you exactly what I'm going to make yet but it's still going to be probably jumper kind of makes and things I think but don't hold me to it and uh, I've still got that navy glitter fabric when I bought this from the sewing street 
um, I bought it in navy so I've got that and I have ordered a new pattern um, Tilly and the Buttons has got a new pattern called the Billy sweatshirt and she does a dress version as well so that's on order so um, that will be turning up at some point um, so so that's the dress making um, obviously the knitting I told you about I'm waiting for yarn I don't know if I'm going to make the the headband and the maiden bracelet this side of Christmas now because it's seven weeks till Christmas isn't it so maybe I'll wait till after Christmas to do those and that's what I wanted to tell you about you know that I've been you may know that I've been doing this uh, hand embroidery partridge in a pear tree project I've got ten left to do well nine and a half if you count the one I've started and there's seven weeks left till Christmas Day so I don't know if I'm gonna get those done because that's more than one a week I've got to complete and uh, so maybe that's why I can't really concentrate on knitting but then obviously I've said to my son I'm gonna do the knitted owl so I'll have a chat with him if he doesn't mind if he's not desperate for the owl, maybe I'll, I'll instead of doing any knitting, because uh, I'm not going to do any more on the crochet wreath, I'm leaving that. And, may, and, and, and there are some Christmas knits I want to do as well. So uh, I just feel like now I'm running out of time because there's Christmas things I want to make. So um, and, like, and I, was, I did buy a crochet magazine. Here again, I bought a magazine, a physical magazine, when we was in that last minute lockdown thing. A crochet magazine. And there's a lovely reef. Oh, hang on, there's the postman. Bear with me. Right, I'm back. Uh, the, it was the postman and it wasn't for me. I can tell by the shape of it. It's a bit of vinyl, you know, like a record vinyl. Um, my husband, um, he's been sourcing, you know, rare music that he likes that, you know, you know, he's just trying to source them. People are selling a lot of things, aren't they? So he's managing to get rare pieces of vinyl for, for not for selling, just for his own personal thingies. So I can tell by the shape of it, it's for him. So I think I was 12 minutes with this video. So uh, I could have actually put it all together. It probably wouldn't have been too bad, but actually it means I can tell you about a couple of other things. Um, my friend bought round a birthday gift for me yesterday. My birthday was in the start of very near the start of October, but with everything that went on, we didn't get a chance to meet up, and uh, and I don't think we was even allowed to. We could have met in the street back then, but I don't I don't know what the rules are. It's so crazy. But she popped to my front door to give me a birthday gift, and she's bought me a paper paper craft kit to make a paper cat and uh, and she wanted me to tell you about it as well so you could tell your craft people but because it isn't Christmas related I don't think I'm going to make it this side of Christmas because she said a confident beginner could make it in 12 hours so it's quite lengthy isn't it so I think I'm going to make that after Christmas or over Christmas maybe uh you know with all when the Christmas you know the Christmas day is over and you're kind of chilling out and things so and I did make a, a pop-up card that I told you about a couple of videos ago I think now and uh, I'm gonna have another sip I'm getting so dry I told you my middle son's 16th birthday is coming up so I made I've made this now it's a box card I don't know if I'm finished with it and I don't even know if I'm gonna send it to him in all honesty but um and I'll probably get him another card anyway but but basically it would be like this in the envelope I haven't made the envelope yet so what should happen is he would get it out the box, go to put it down and it would pop out. So I'll try and do that for you to, for you to see actually. So it pops into a box. It's really clever, isn't it? So um, I, I don't know what, if I'm going to put like things on that he likes and things, but what I found, but the template that I used Mine didn't look like how the ladies looked, right? And uh, so what I might do is I'll, uh, I'll do a blog post and I'll leave a link to the ladies' video so you can see hers. But she had something coming out, but mine actually just looks like a box. I did, must have done something wrong. 
but do you know what i like that it's a box and uh and i suppose you could put all photos of things they like on it i might put 16 on it and things but uh but yeah that was fun to make i do like a bit of paper craft and look i find with paper craft i tend to do it more around christmas and birthdays that's when i go mad and then and then I don't do much else throughout the year uh, anymore anyway. So that is that. Um, have I put any more notes? Right, knickers. I tried to tell you about this last time, but I decided that the video was going to be too long. And I've got notes from before. I wonder. Right. Now, I'm really into pant making. And what happens is when you make some jersey garment you've got leftover jersey and it's really good to make pants out of it now because i'm making more sweatshirty things at the minute this isn't really suitable to make pants out of so what i'm going to do with the leftover fabric if i can't get another garment out of them i'm going to make beanies matching bean fabric beanies that's my plan so um so you might see that up and coming but um, I'm really into making pants because I like using the leftover bits of fabric. So you've seen before that I've made the Megan Nielsen Acacia pants and I absolutely love them. The first ones I made, I used an old super dry vest that was, you know, got, I think got moth holes in it, in all honesty. So I used the bits and I actually put the super dry label on the pants, you know. It's not counterfeit because I'm not selling it. Uh, and I've gone on to, I know I've made a stripy pair and I've made um, ones with, with fold over animal print elastic with deers on it. So I may have put photographs on for you to see. Now, along the way, I also made the Stevie Knickers by Paper Theory. Now, you may remember I made those out of an old super dry t-shirt, a pink t-shirt. The fabric wasn't really suitable. So I didn't, I said I preferred the Acacia ones, but I said it wasn't really fair to the paper theory stevie knickers because i hadn't used suitable fabric and i did feel a bit more like they're a bit more bridget jones kind of things but i've ended up really liking those pants Re i really like oh, you know i do wear them a lot actually when i just want to be comfy so i know initially when i made them i wasn't all that impressed i felt like i've got little girl knickers on but actually i love them right then you will have you might have seen that i made the rosy lady shorts by cloth habit now i wasn't and i used my leftover pajama fabric i made the tilly in the buttons juno pajamas and i got leftover fabric now i wasn't over impressed um with the lady shorts because they wasn't what i was expecting i mean, if you remember if you saw them i pointed out the crotch piece was quite long and they sat quite high and my bum was hanging out and i was expecting it to be on my bum and sit a bit lower and i showed you the line drawer and i showed you the pants however I've changed my mind again. I absolutely love them. Do you know when you want to wear something uh, under your jeans where you're going to get probably a VPL line or something with a VPL, visible panty line, if you don't know what that means, but you don't want your knicker line being like down here, right? So actually, because they, they kind of come right up here, the, the knicker line looks like a lot nicer if you're going to get a line under your clothes. And uh, and actually, you've still got that comfort because they've because they're quite wide on the side. You've not got bits digging in because I know you can wear a thong and I do own many thongs. I've never made a thong, but sometimes I'm not in the mood for it. You know, having something sticking up my bum. I used to live in them, but um, I just can't. I just can't do it anymore. I don't know if it's because I wear a lot of these like tight fitting jeans and then it, they just start aggravating me. But I absolutely love those lady shorts now so i will be making more pants i'm not going out of my way to buy fabric to make pants they're just basically when i've got leftover suitable fabric from garments i'll then make pants with it 
and I like trying different patterns. But I did mention uh, in a previous video that I, in a magazine subscription, you could, and I think I said I got free postage. I didn't get free postage. I got the book for free, but I had to pay the postage. And this is it, it's a knicker book. And uh, and it's got all these different knickers in. I've not made anything yet, but there are, I think there are some woven ones and I've never made woven knickers. So that could be quite handy. The, the patterns are in the back and they, they appear to be full size. I don't know what size, it looks like they go up to a size 18. And I would say these are UK sizes. They say they're eight, size eight to 18. Now, I know sometimes I come up smaller than an eight on my lower, but um, but looking at some of them, what I you'd do is you'd, I could make it a bit smaller if I need to, or just do the elastic a bit tighter or something. But uh, but there, there's some lovely pants in it. Um, there's some ones with little ribbons on the side. Um, those kind of these these are all brazilian those are called these are all woven these are stretch fabric those are nice aren't they and more woven with little bows on so i think that like, i don't know how wearable those are going to be under your clothes unless you're wearing something for, i don't think i'm going to be wearing making those maybe for pajamas maybe french french knickers they're called they're like bloomers don't they um and they call those the cotton original so i thought what attracted to me to that is the book was free i only had to pay the postage and they use woven and it's by dealer adley and, Are and uh, erica petto and now um, so those might be pants that are up and coming as well so uh what, what, what i've got here look i've got a new pattern right oh gosh i haven't told you about this um, my son, my home educated son, uh, we're doing a home education project where we're going to be making an outfit together. And we've been doing all this research and pattern buying and he's changed his mind again. So he's not going as Dracula or the Grim Reaper, but I've bought this because I need to make a cloak type thing. So I thought the Grim Reaper looked quite appropriate with the wide bell sleeves and it would just save me having to figure it out myself so i think i'm gonna have to do something i don't know what the collar looks like it doesn't actually show you on the line drawing on the back it only shows you the dracula i think oh there's a there's a little cape over so you can't really see how the neckline finishes so um i'm going to be using that as a bit of a base to make another it's like an anime type character um and he wears a black uh, kind of cloak with a red line and it's got red motifs on it and things i think we're gonna be able to buy the shoes um so yeah so that that's something that, it's been a bit delayed actually this project because of because of lockdown all the time because i want to go and buy the fabrics for those in person i think i want to go to barry's fabrics in birmingham with my son to pick out fabrics i don't want to buy something and him go no i don't like the look of that um so uh yeah so that that's ongoing and i have and, and one of the other patterns um Another YouTube, I think Kath, I saw, I found another YouTube, Kath Craft, I think her name is, and uh, she'd made this pattern, the Kokowara Crafts Plum Dress. So I've purchased this pattern and I sent off, and I've actually sent this off, so Guthrie and Garney have printed the A0 file out for me and i know i've printed that out myself but i don't know when i'm gonna make that and i don't know if it's really gonna be my style because i like quite fitted on the waist i don't really like boxy all that much but that might be an up and coming but i don't maybe that's gonna be next year i don't know but it's good to get these things ready to go isn't it and what i have been doing is i've been getting all my stretch knit fabrics out 
and testing the stretch on them and I found a lot of them have only got about 20% stretch and I went through a number right of my stretch fabric garments and I've wrote how much stretch so you know for example that only needs I've put on the front you can't see because it it's in pencil 10% crossway stretch and the South Bank sweater by Nina Lee needs 20% stretch so and the Soho 7 uh, needs 20% so I might be able to make some of these the um the co what is it what is this one called the Fraser by Soaholic that only needs 20 so I've put the ones that need the least amount of stretch at the front and they need more and more stretch as they get further back but what I wish I'd done now when I tested all the stretch on my fabric I probably should have left a note on them I wish now I'd got a piece of paper wrote what the stretch was and pinned it to it so I'd have to go through them all again but at least I know what I've wrote on the front of these what stretch you need because it doesn't mean you can't if you haven't got the right stretch fabric you can't make the garment but you've just got to do it in a different size so if you your garment needs 40% stretch but yours is only 20 you've probably got to size up a few sizes but I'm trying to be complimentary and use the right kind of stretch because I'm t I feel like I'm pattern testing I know I'm not a pattern tester for these these have been pattern tested but I'm pattern testing a lot of patterns so I kind of want to do with it the way they said and then further on along the line, I'm probably going to start making alterations to things and whatever. But uh, I'm just kind of making them sort of as they are. What I didn't tell you about my... I don't think I told you um, about my uh, Astoria. I did make one alteration and that's this. I cut that off the neckband. I made the extra small and that is what I cut off the neckband because unlike this one this one I struggled to fit it in this one I felt like there was going to be a bit too much excess I tested it before I sewed it in and I made the decision I was going to cut that much off either end so mine I'll measure those I'll put them together so I can see what the total is that I've cut off if I've done it in the right direction anyway let's hope I've cut off about four and a half inches off that neckband piece on mine for my Astoria so um but that's because the fabric I was using that's what I felt it needed when I kind of like fed it around I thought no I think there's going to be too much excess because I didn't want the same old story where I was going to really struggle to get the net banded so that is where I'm at at the minute um uh, hopefully uh, that's worked okay doing a two part so hopefully you haven't found this video first because things are not going to probably make sense you need to watch part one and this is part two so what I'll do in the description box of this video I will leave a um, a link to my blog post where I write everything up and I put pictures in and and things now I did mention in my last video that I, I think I now can put words up to let you know what if I make a mistake in things and it go away again because it used to come up and stay there for the whole video well I have learned how to put video uh, to, uh, words that will pop up and go away but they don't go in the place I want them to so in my last video you, you would have heard a creak at the door and me looking over here and it was because my eldest son basically all three members three of my family members came in during that video um that i did in Oct my last one in october and i wanted to say who was coming in and put it up but it was telling you right at the start of the video and then disappearing it just wouldn't put it at that point so i've still got a lot to learn with my video making so please bear with me i'm hoping if you've been following me for quite some time that you've noticed that my videos are getting a little bit better um i'm a bit more confident to speak to you hopefully i'm umming and ahhing less uh hopefully my editing skills are getting a bit better because at one point i just didn't they couldn't even put photographs in or anything so hopefully that you are noticing i'm growing with my abilities in the, it's a whole skill in itself actually 
learning to do if somebody asked me for advice you just couldn't do it really if it's just something you've got to try with your equipment and learn over time and you slowly you get it slowly but I'm still not quite there at the minute but thank you so much for joining me today um if you're into knitting and crochet look out for a new um program called yarn lane they put it at the end of sewing street so look out for that um I don't normally say oh please like and subscribe and I know that you know I probably should but I never say it. but if you do want to see more videos um you know please um you know hit the subscribe button and the little bell button so you get notified and i would really appreciate the likes like i'm not profiting from these um videos because i've got not got monetization on them uh, and adverts and things and i'm not you know i'm not profiting i'm doing this purely for fun um i don't want to undermine other youtubers uh, that are making money from it uh, if they are making money or people that are trying to make a craft business you know uh, good well done to you um i'm not undermining anyone um but uh, currently you know this it's just the thing for fun for me to do because basically i don't really have anybody um often to speak to about my crafts especially in my house so it's like popping a fizzy bottle lid off when I get on these videos because I can go crazy talking to my heart's content about crafts and I've got somebody actually wants to listen to it because people in my everyday life would probably think oh gosh what so I actually um hold back and sometimes I don't even I often don't tell people I do crafts even though it's a massive part of my life because I don't want to bore people and uh, so you know it's one of those so <laughs> so thank you so much for joining me today and hopefully I'll be back soon with some more dressmaking and more makes and things and uh, and take care and look after yourselves bye